We're two years into Linux Foundation Europe, and I hope that you enjoyed the, the content so far, and hopefully you understood. You know, every time that we meet, you understand a little better what we can uh, help you with. But as you know, I'm a big fan of uh, getting feedback and uh, collaborative ideation. So uh, let's see how this goes. But we tried to uh, put together. We had our, our, our. I don't know if you knew, but we have a Linux Foundation Europe advisory board that we formed about a year ago. Um, there's about 20 uh, um, pretty involved folks from uh, you know different countries, different representatives. We have public, uh, you know, we have NGOs and uh, large organizations, small organizations. I try to really select folks from also different uh, sort of areas of technology, areas of um, uh, geographical areas, different cultures. I think that's sort of. Every time I'm back to Europe, I'm really excited to uh, really have very different perspectives. And so uh, we had our last meeting yesterday, and we're really starting to think about you know the next year and really sort of taking stock after the first two years. Uh, what can we do together, and what can we do uh, that is more and more impactful? So we figured that today we will run uh, a couple of key questions um, by you in an interactive fashion, if you're interested. So I guess pull up your phone, uh, because we're going to have some um, QR codes where we would love to get your input. And you know, uh, how much time I have for this? 45 minutes, I think? Less? We're we running late, just making sure. OK. Um, so again, this is about getting both in terms of projects and members, uh, membership. You know, I know not everyone is a member here, but if you're not, uh, uh, you know, maybe you will, and maybe the answers to these questions will help uh, shape how we can get you to become a member. Uh, um, and so, yeah, that's sort of the the next uh, part of the session, and hopefully we'll we'll discuss. We'll have some time to discuss uh, the findings. So, as you know. Our first and foremost uh, goal is to host projects uh, in Europe. And you might know that the LF has other regional organizations. We have LF APEC and LF Japan. Uh, but LF Europe is the only organization that can host projects uh, in Europe. And so the question is pretty straightforward, and it's pretty broad, so there's no wrong answers. Uh, um, but we would like to understand, also on the basis of what you uh, heard today, but really just, again, no wrong answers, if there is any specific project, um, either existing open source projects or idea for a project, uh, if there is any particular area, uh, again, whether it's a certain vertical or uh, a certain area of technology, um, that you'd like to, whether it's existing, you know, I see Mobile Hub coming up, or whether it's a, you know, new one um, that you'd like us to focus on. And then, of course, this is anonymous, but um, if you have thoughts and more colors, uh, uh, we'd be happy to, to um, See what comes out. OK, I see government open source guidelines, open source in the public sector, SDGs. Oh, open tofu, that's interesting. Hmm. Public sector code. <laughs> oh, ho. Oh. Someone, that, that's a big one. OK, that's, that's really validating. Mm hmm. AI model, that's interesting. Yeah, I'm going to let it evolve a little bit before I Kind of a digital assets tokenization, yep. It's very interesting. And, and, and again, I'm going to try to ask questions. Maybe uh, you guys can help me with, uh, with answers. When you, when you say public sector code, which certainly seems to be uh, growing in, in size there, is it about hosting? 
public sector code? Is it about, you know, I see also government open source guidelines. Um, you know, be interested if anyone wanted to chime in. Of course, yes, you're going to give it out that you had that response, which is great. So I know who to follow up with. Um, but it's certainly very validating to see uh, public sector code there. Do you guys think, I was having a really interesting conversation uh, before on, you know, uh, sort of the different ways that we can involve the public sector. And, you know, uh, the way I see it, we, we really did quite a good job over the years at, at providing a governance for individuals and corporations. Uh, and then when we add sort of this third actor in the mix, uh, it's not just about funding, of course, that's sort of pretty obvious one. Uh, it's not just about sort of releasing code, um, but it's about having them, having the public sector, A, collaborate amongst the public sector. I think I, I always hear a lot of, again, fragmentation, and it's by nature, you know, you have governments at many levels, many, many, many countries, EU levels, so obviously there is a natural fragmentation. So I think I would love to explore uh, how we can help the public sector collaborate with each other. And obviously, as we heard from Daniel as well, sort of the multi-stakeholder public-private sector uh, partnerships. Does anyone that put in their public sector code wanted to provide some color? Otherwise, this is already very useful for us. The microphone, the handheld, maybe it's off. Hello. Yep. <laughs> so as we heard from Mirko, I think that it makes much sense to also have some public sector community like Linux energy sector or the automotive sector. I think the public sector also has some quite um, distinct culture and, and um, practices or non-practices. So therefore, I think it makes sense to connect people from France, from Germany, um, Switzerland, obviously, Netherlands, we have heard. So I think there's a whole bunch of, of public sector, governmental people who are innovative. But um, sometimes it's helpful to have colleagues and to connect and provide examples and success stories. And as we have heard with these policy examples. And of course, there is um, every country has distinct requirements. Yep. But more and more. I think um, we are learning on how to collaborate also in the government sector uh, on an international basis. So I think Linux Foundation could play an important role here. And I, I agree, of course, but I'm biased. <laughs> um, I, I don't want to put you on the spot, so this is kind of a question back for the audience. But you know, just putting it out there, you know, I think when I was that 2021 or 2022, um, I read an article about one particular uh, uh, country in Europe suggesting the creation of, we need our own um, national foundation to manage open source code. Um, and you know, this goes back to those conversations on, on digital sovereignty and, and um, so I guess sort of the question back for the audience, because I would, I think we absolutely could help here, especially Linux Foundation Europe, which again, especially at EU level, we are based in Brussels, you know, all the trademark and intellectual property will be residing in Europe, you know, so a lot of the sort of basic legal concerns are, are taken care of. Um, but would you think, uh, uh, you know, would you think that, is it something that we should start, like grassroots, meaning, you know, putting out a, a, a I, I do absolutely think that starting from the experience that we have, we could, you know, uh, it would be just a small incremental step to help uh, the public sector. But I see a lot of, uh, 
sort of political objections uh, in a way to it. So I, I don't know how do people feel about it or if you have any suggestions or recommendations. Um, you know, it's, a, it's not an easy question, but that's sort of what we're trying to get to the bottom of. Uh, okay. Uh, oh. oh, please. Oh, sorry. Yeah, actually, we have lots of grassroots movements, but yeah. they are only loosely connected. So the yeah. first step would be connect them all and make them more visible. Yeah. The second step is if this is a successful process, and this will be definitely then... Uh, take a strong position because effectively we've heard from Switzerland they get everything from open source except security which is kind of strange because the IPsec stack has been developed for the Swiss army in Switzerland Yep. and in Germany uh, the um, messengers are based on matrix because they are open source and they can modify some proprietary encryption into it if they want. Yep. So these are completely uh, different um, receptions of the same idea of security. So um, in, in my opinion, now it's the time to have a strong position and say, OK, everybody is using open source at the moment, Mercedes-Benz, SAP, Microsoft, Google. And therefore, open source is not something uh, which, which is knocking at the door and yeah, can you let me in and we want to have our small projects on every uh, open source is a strong movement and on the political level uh, tell the politicians that they can be successful economically uh, in terms of sovereignty and yep. other things. So, so making it stronger and making it, yes, we are here and we are here to stay and uh, we give you the opportunity to be successful. This is uh, not this grassroots anymore. Oh, I want to have some whatever, uh, what was it? A typical uh, cemetery solution, open cemetery from France for the public sector. Yeah, this is a small piece of it, but we, this is a strong movement like, like Zendis in Germany and, and uh, Sovereign Tech Fund. So taking a strong position is now possible. Yep, I think that's very helpful. And, and I think you're absolutely right. The, uh, when, I, when I look, again, even in the financial institutions, which I, I think is the closest that I can think of to the government in, in many ways, for how conservative at least they used to be, um, during you know, the last few years, there's been uh, you know, open source vulnerability, open source supply chain vulnerability that came up, especially after lock for shell I was like, Oh, jeez. <laughs> this is going to, you know, cut our legs in terms of our growth. And the reality instead is that I've seen financial institutions doubling down on investments in open source in the sense that they were already sold on sort of the business value for them. And so, you know, they understood that, okay, well, this is actually now a corporate responsibility. And it's actually, it's very easy. Again, I don't like FUD you know, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. But it's very, you know, you don't have to sell to a bank why they need to be secure. Like, it's pretty easy. <laughs> you know, they, they actually have a pretty strong practice there. So I, I think you're right. I guess I guess maybe the, to me the follow-up question, and I want to sort of give a chance to Kay to, to jump in, it's like, it's so fragmented that it's really hard to go about it. Like. Yeah, I guess, yeah, we could start from the associations that exist already and sort of put them together. Uh, we could start top down from the public sector organization, but again, at which level of granularity? Are we talking state? Are we talking uh, uh, region? Are we talking municipality? There's a lot of work ongoing on municipalities, even, uh, uh, you know, uh, in other organizations. So very interesting questions. Okay, sorry. Yes, yeah, so maybe um, <clears throat> alluding to what you said before, the fragmentation itself. And since I'm new to the party here, so I don't know how you usually approach Please. things. But anyway, uh, so I would think there would be it would be beneficial to have kind of a, a programmatic approach, really bringing all these different opportunities and the different ways how, for example, in this case, the public sector so solves some of the issues, like uh, providing a public code repository for open source projects. 
um, <clears throat> like uh, setting out some, some products like the Semitic solution or, or other solutions. And in bringing this into one big picture, we could say, okay, there are all these grassroots things happening. And it's really good to know about these and to share these. And this could be a platform to share them. But from that, we can really step up and say, okay, what does it mean at a higher level, at a policy level? So which, um, say, um, regulations we, do we need or which regulations are in our way and how, how we can change these things to make life easier for these grassroots little things happening yep. so that they can grow. I think that's, for me, this all together. So public sector code is for me a little bit uh, falls short of, of, of yeah, bringing this all together. But I could imagine that this would be somehow, yeah, maybe an approach how to move it forward. Yep. Yeah, more from a pro programmatic point of view. So, yeah, connecting all these different dots, the little ones, the big policy ones, and, yeah, coming to a consensus on where to, which way to move and which things to prioritize. That makes a lot of sense. Um, I guess the question is also that comes to mind is funding. And you know, finding this, you know, it is it is a pretty. I would I would expect. I mean, again, we could start small, but I do think that there are a lot of small, fragmented efforts. So I think an effort here, when I think about it, should be, you know, to your point, programmatic, thought through, and probably, um, you know, we require a substantial effort, um, and I think it's much easier to get funding from the public sector on existing programs rather than sort of, you know, what we generally do with corporates. Like, hey, we have an idea, there's a project, there's a pitch deck, do you want to chip in? Uh, it's sort of a very different uh, process. So I'd be very, very interested to continue developing this conversation uh, with you folks as, as a little bit advising. I know we are forming a public sector uh, committee under uh, LF Europe, um, so I would love to continue the conversation there. I think this is absolutely insightful. Um, I see AI model there, I'm getting very curious. I think CRA guidelines, I think you've heard from, from Mirko uh, what we plan to do. Um, and so, yeah, we're absolutely laser focused on helping our projects in the community. Very interesting new areas like, well, Maintainer Fund. Maintainer Fund is very interesting. I'm trying to work with the Sovereign Tech Fund more. We would love to see more of those uh, efforts uh, across Europe. Um, and honestly, even I think that's an area where public-private par public partnership is really aligned. So again, keep it confidential, but next week, um, in, in 10 days, I have the large Finos conference in New York. And we are actually going to announce a vertical specific effort to analyze dependencies of the large financial institutions. First of all, understand if they are different from what existing surveys have revealed, you know, the, the Harvard census, Harvard, uh, was that uh, census two, or the work that Alpha Opgrega is doing. Uh, but in my preliminary conversations with some of the public sector folks were like, yeah, there's definitely a lot of value even in just knowing what banks are, not only in terms of dependencies, but in terms of their practices. Like, are they updating their dependencies? Like, one thing that always struck me was that uh, Log4J was patched within, you know, one week or two weeks and deployed to Maven Central. And... You know, actually, we always, I, I, always used, uh, I always used to joke about banks being slow in their processes, but like 90, 95% of the banks did update and consume the new, ver the patched version of Log4j in, I think, less than a month, a month and a half, something like that. Uh, I don't, I, I, I'm quoting a report from Sonatype, uh, uh, the, the state of the supply chain security from, I think, a year ago. And I think the last update that I've got from Brian and, and the, the Sonatype team is that, yeah, even last October, last November, about 30, 40% of downloads from Maven Central, it's still the old unpatched version. So 
you know, open supply chain security, super important, maintainers fund, maintainer sustainability is all absolutely amazing, but if we don't then consume the things that, the, the, so there's, there's a whole, you know, problem of practices and incentives uh, inside the organizations, you know, moving always to the next thing and never sort of address technical debt. Um, okay. I don't want to, I can keep talking because this is super interesting. I just wanted to ask a question on AI model. Um, is, this, is this hosting a European AI model? Or is there anyone that have thoughts? I, I, I'm trying to understand specifically for LF Europe. I mean, certainly LF itself, we have LF AI in data, and there's several, as probably you've heard from Annie before. Uh, you know, several uh, open source AI models. Well, whatever open source AI model will mean, we hope will will comply to that. Um, any comments? Yeah. I interpret it as policy or open source policy. Open source policy. Oh. But I didn't know. It's very useful. That's good. <laughs> okay, good, good. Yeah, no, that's kind of the idea. Okay. Uh, how am I doing on time? Okay, so how, how long do I have? Five minutes. Okay, better, better move to the next question then. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't think we're going to be able to do uh, three questions, but... Um, Let's just do this one, I think. Well, we have a, a, a meta questions. So we're thinking about, so I have two more questions, but we're all gonna be able to, to do one, because <laughs> I always run late. One is, we've been discussing with our board the idea of starting a uh, new series of events that it's more uh, um, focused, again, in, edit, you know, we do the big open source summits here in Europe. Each of the projects has its own, you know, the large projects has, you know, there's KubeCon, there's the Energy Summit, there's, there's of course, very sector specific. Um, but, you know, one of the ways that we think about engaging the local community is uh, starting events uh, and, and really bringing the community together. The DLF has clearly a pretty recognized brand. Um, and so we're thinking about launching uh, the Europe roadshows, you know, in European capitals. Again, this is very much a shell of, um, you know, we can fill it with whatever we want, uh, whether it is a focus on public sector, you know, maybe do it in Brussels, uh, whether it's a focus on, uh, you know, again, digital sovereignty or, uh, any specific sort of topic that, of course, might be of interest of LF Europe and some of the sponsors. Um, before we answer the question, the other question that I have is, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with the benefits that LF Europe provides, and yeah, you're probably not going to be able to read in detail. I'm happy to share. Um, but I was trying to get some feedback from uh, the members as to what do you guys uh, would like to see as a member benefit for your uh, membership in Linux Foundation Europe? So now that I'm probably ran out of my five minutes, <laughs> what 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 would be what's the best question to answer? Like, which topics you like to see LF Europe approaches focused on, or what additional benefits you like to see? Can I get a show of ends? Roadshows? One, two, three, four, five, six. Benefits? One, two, three. Okay, roadshows, fine. Cool. So, there's just QR code there, and just to give you some color, again, we're really trying to create a platform to connect the community locally. And it could be developer focused, it could be public sector focused, it could be vertical industries 
focused or it could be centered on a certain technology. You know, I would love to, yes, one of the ideas that came up yesterday was, you know, I'd love to bring a project along. So I happen to, with my board, also control the, the Finos budget. So maybe financial service is a good example. And maybe we do it in a, you know, we do our events in London and New York, but there's, of course, other capitals uh, in Europe. So it'd be very useful to understand sort of on a high level, you know, theory. Uh, <laughs> Great. Makes sense. Uh, explain Linux Foundation. I think that's a very, it's a very interesting one. And I have 50 minutes at the end to kind of give a, a, for those of you who are not at the keynote on Monday, that just give a little bit of a hint as to the trust that, that we help build. Energy Roadshow, that's interesting. I, I see developer, I love that. There was a big conversation yesterday at the board whether we should focus, once again, grassroots versus you know, try to convince executives of the business value of open source, regulation and how to deal with it. Super useful. Hospital education. Let it um, grow. Business. Interesting. Open web. That's an interesting one. It's interesting, though, that, uh, uh, yep, <laughs> that regulation and CRA is certainly um, something that comes up quite often. And so it, it, it makes the pair to me with the public sector focus of the previous question. It's, it's strongly pointing to me to an event in Brussels. But <laughs> I don't know how we can get developers. Developers and policymakers in the same room? Yeah? That'd be fun. I remember a FOSDEM in 2022. <laughs> that didn't go so well. But, you know, I guess they heard us, you know. Um, okay, this is absolutely uh, fascinating. Yeah. Okay, I don't know if anyone wants to chime in. I think I'm actually at time. But uh, yeah, I think this gives us definitely a lot of topic. I also noticed quite of a broad spectrum. If I was plotting this Gaussian, this, this bell curve, it's pretty broad, I would say. Um, but that gives us a lot, a lot to work with. And well, now that I've shared this idea, uh, generally it's always um, useful to have one or two sort of pivotal sort of core group of folks that we can uh, work with. So please, uh, if you are interested in you know, helping us organize, and I'm not talking about necessarily sponsoring or, or you know, money, of course, we're going to be looking for sponsors. But um, you know, the way we're thinking about this is also that it aligns with the personal interest of, of individuals in a certain area or the corporate interest of a certain organization. So if you are interested to help us uh, develop any of these ideas, please reach out to Federica and I, and I'd love to uh, see what we can do for 2025. But sounds like it, just general feedback, sounds like a good idea to have a bit more presence uh, from Linux Foundation Europe across Europe in 2025, other than the major events? Or you guys are like, dude, no more events. Can we just, can we just work sometimes? Yeah? OK. OK, I think I am out of time. But thank you so much for helping us uh, shape the strategy next year, and you know, we won't be able probably to 
deliver to every single topic up here. Uh, but this is this is absolutely helpful. So uh, thank you so much. Thank you.